Bonjour et bienvenue. Welcome to the Car and Bike Show right here on the NDTV network. I'm Siddharth Vinayak Patankar and thanks for joining us. Why did I begin in French? Well, of course, it's this car. Now, you may remember this from a couple of weeks ago. At the Auto Expo in New Delhi is when we showed you this car for the first time. It is the Quid concept from Renault and it's the first time that the company chose to make a global debut outside of Europe. So it's a significant one as well, especially for us. We have it right here on the program today. We will have details for you coming up on this car. Renault certainly did take everyone by surprise when it decided to take the covers off this car at the Delhi Auto Expo. Why? Well, it's Renault, a French company with a history of being very Europe-centric. Well, that is what the New World Order is all about, right? The first concept unveiled outside Europe is indeed of significance to Renault and to us because it tells the world two things that India is significant despite the policy muddle and the recent slowdown and that compact vehicles like the Quid concept are the way to go if you want success in this highly competitive market. Now we didn't custom order the sky like this just to match the grey on the car, that I can tell you, we would have loved it if it had been a sunny day but interestingly enough the colour scheme that you see on the car isn't just about the Renault logo it's also about the Indian landscape. Yes, the car draws a lot of inspiration. The design team has worked very closely on the Indian context while developing this concept. So the grey represents the Indian landscape. The little hints of yellow you see are the flowers and spices of India. Now, is that just a story or is that just a line? No, because the car has also had design inputs from an Indian design team. Remember, Renault has centers here in India as well. And so specifically, Indian designers have worked on the car along with the global team. So that's nice. The thing that really grabs me is not just the flamboyant nature of the car, of course it's a concept, it's supposed to look a little outlandish, but take a look at the cues you're seeing here. It's a very different kind of headlamp cluster, it juts out, it has a life of its own if you will, and the glow that you see, the white, it could very well end up defining daytime running light signatures for a brand like Renault in the near future. So that's nice because it's different, it's not inbuilt, it's almost outside the light. There's also uh, an element where you can actually see there's a hole through and through here and yet that's where the indicator lights up there you go right on cue and uh, so that's what's nice about it it's different the pattern you see here with the use of these dots well it's got an organic feel to it you've seen that with the Desir concept you've seen that with the Capture concept it is of course what uh, Lawrence van der Necker has put through when it comes to Renault's design language huge Renault logo all of that is common to what you're seeing on cars like the Clio the Capture and now even the updated Fluence in India but it adds to uh, just the overall sort of flow to the design in my view and uh, the stripe you see along the side here well that lights up as well you can't tell in the daytime but it, at night that would be nice and bright huge massive chunky wheels intentional because uh, well the idea was to have this slight dune buggy kind of an appeal to it so the tires actually jut out from the flush uh, side of the fender that's again different quid is the name it's uh, quid just you know currency it's it's sort of colloquial use of language there the yellow color on the roof of course like I said inspired by the flowers and spices what you see jutting out here is a little camera it is in lieu of a rear view mirror so you got a display which we'll show you in a bit more of that dotted pattern here the three pointed pattern that you see here and on the door is also in the wheel pattern as well now that of course is how you open the door I'll show you that in a second come around to the back and there's a little bit of a well, a hatch-like feel to it, but it isn't actually a hatch. What you actually have is a tray that comes out. We'll show you that in a second. And uh, the lights at the back, again, very differently done. When I said this car has organic elements, look at that. That's just so typically organic. Again, has a flower petal kind of a feel to it. So that pretty much rounds things off in terms of the styling elements. You do have twin rear tailpipes as well, which adds a little aggression. And now, let me show you how that tray opens. That's nice and futuristic. I'll tell you what, the cabin from the outside gives you the impression of being a little cramped. But it's surprisingly spacious. You do feel cocooned in it and yet you don't feel cramped. So that's a credit to the designer. 
you are sitting in the middle here as the driver, which is of course odd and it's not in line with any regulations in any market. But again, the surprise, when you sit here and you take charge of the wheel, you feel in command. It's got this co cockpit-like view that's laid out in front of you. You don't find it odd somehow sitting in the middle when you're driving the car. Now, the display is, of course, futuristic looking. This is a concept car. But a little TFT screen here that gives you all the information that you need. You've got the speed that shows up here on this glass. And uh, the big, massive screen here is to give you the display of the flying companion. Remember, there's this helicam that's mounted on the roof of the car. We don't have it right now because, uh, well, they've taken it back to France. But uh, it was there at the Auto Expo. It's basically just a helicam that travels ahead of you. You can control it using this as the remote. And it tells you about traffic conditions or road conditions further up ahead of you, so it kind of warns you, if you will. Yeah, a little bit of a gimmick, it works. The other thing that grabs you right away, though, is the seats and the pattern and the color palette. That is very futuristic. There's this honeycomb pattern to the dash and to the whole interior, in fact. But it's this lattice work that you see on the, uh, on the seats and on the door panels. That's what's interesting, because it's been inspired by a bird's nest, if you please. But it also serves a dual purpose. Remember, the car draws inspiration from India, so it's, it's in line with our climate. The separation between the lattice and the seat gives you a sense of airiness. So it kind of keeps you cool, or so they say. So that's the inspiration behind that. And uh, yeah, I have to say that everything else, the little features like rear view cameras instead of mirrors with display here and the little screens, and uh, the fact that there's no big clunky transmission. You've got this little rotary dial, somewhat like the Jags, that uh, allows you to put the car in gear. And then also the climate control on the, on the door, the individual climate control system for uh, passengers on both sides of the car right there on the door and a big rotary dial in the back. It's, uh, it's different, it's interesting and it's pretty exciting I can tell you because of course it is a concept. So you've had an introduction to this concept. Now unlike some of the other concepts which are just design studies, this one is a working concept. It's powered by a 1.2 litre 120 brake horsepower engine the same one that goes into the Clio in France. I am all set. Get the quid on the road and its sheer volume confined under those four meters is what grabs attention. Of course, a real world car would never be as exaggerated but it's the roof line and height that will no doubt stay on when the car hits production. And yes, indications are that a derivative of this concept will indeed result in a subcompact SUV sooner than you think. Now this is a concept car, so no doubt about it, there's going to be shakes and rattles and all sorts of things because this isn't a manufactured car body. I mean, it isn't one that's really ready for the road, yet it's functional, it's drivable, and so that's what makes the whole experience a little bit special. I have to say that uh, it's the view of the road sitting in the middle. That's the part that uh, comes through, and that's the part which I guess I wanted to experience. It's good that they put in a real-world engine into the car. It's not something flamboyant and flashy and really large displacement. It's a 1.2 liter, but it is turbocharged. It's got extra power which is kind of a reflection of what's happening in the European space right now. You get cars exactly like this now, isn't it? More and more. Now, the other thing that uh, I have to mention here is that uh, the car is surprisingly maneuverable as well. Of course, it's not too large on the outside. It is sub four meter after all. And uh, the transmission, also very easy to uh, switch in and out of uh, reverse and drive. And you didn't expect that perhaps on a concept. Besides the India debut, the bigger Indian connect, as I mentioned, comes from the design teams that worked on the quid. Exterior design came from Renault Design America Latina in Brazil, another emerging market, where such a product would be relevant. But the color and trim work happened in India, carried out by Neha Lad, while Mishu Batra designed the awesome bird's nest interior. Of course, overall design was in keeping with Renault's new design language globally that's taking the world by storm under the helm of Lawrence van der Necker. I spoke with Lawrence when he was in India at the Expo. 
Yeah, so quid is really a name that we feel is young, it's punchy, it says what it is, it's a bit slang for a, for a pound, and I think uh, it makes you wonder, you know, it's an element of surprise, and that's what this car means, means to be. Where in all of that does the balance come in between the European sensibilities and the European market, which is obviously your strong home base, mm. and where the brand is going? I mean, the, the new markets, India, you know, some of the other frontiers which you're exploring. Well, I think that's a very good question. Obviously, we need to respect our roots. We are a French brand, we're from Europe, and we will definitely continue to, to communicate this. But at the same time, the growth is outside, and so we have to respect that. So the key for us is to stay true to our values, a human brand that's innovative, that has great design, is very safe, but we make cars adapted to the local markets. And that means we need to choose the right pricing point, we need to give them the right features, we need to respect the needs of the local markets. And I think if we have this strong point of vision of the brand, but adapted to the markets, we have the perfect combination. All right, one last thing. Uh, what inspiration do you draw from India? Ah, I think uh, India is, a, is a, uh, a complete sensorial experience, to put it in one way. It's, uh, it changes your the way, what you see, what you smell, what you, what you hear, what you feel, I think it's a complete immersing experience. I think incredible in you is really not far from the truth. I really appreciate that and, and we appreciate this concept being debuted here. Thank you Thank very you. much.